Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, it is my honor to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues on social media, or with anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in my series on nonlinear regression. So in previous videos in this playlist, we looked at the basics of nonlinear regression. Then we looked at the quadratic model in depth. And now this video is about the piecewise regression model. It's kind of related to the quadratic model, but it's different in its own right. And it uses interesting techniques that I think are beneficial to learning for further study. So let's go ahead and begin. So just a quick note before we begin, if you've watched the other videos in this playlist, while this example looks exactly the same, it's not exactly the same. I did change a few things in this video specifically to make this model work. So while it's 95% the same, there are a few changes. So just wanted to mention that. So Jack Buckley has owned a large used car lot outside Melbourne, Australia for over 30 years. Now as a business person, he likes to keep track of how many cars a salesperson sells per week and their total sales. So Jack would like to examine the relationship between how many total cars have been sold by each salesperson and how many weeks each salesperson has worked for Buckley's used cars. So our goal is to explore the differences between the quadratic model we've used in other videos and a piecewise regression model that we'll do in this video. So here is our data. So you can see that in the first column, we have our independent variable, which is the job tenure, how long they've been on the job in weeks. So the first person has been on the job for 168 weeks, and then the total cars they have sold over that time. So the second person has been on the job for 428 weeks, and during that time, they have sold 300 cars. So you get the idea. Now, when we make a scatter plot of this data, this is what it looks like. Now, if we can tell just by looking at it, we've talked about this in the previous videos, this is not a linear model, okay? So it doesn't go in a straight line in any direction. It seems to go up and then takes a turn and then kind of goes down. So we could fit the quadratic model and this is what we would get. So you can see that it fits the data uh, pretty well. We have a very high R squared value of 0 0.8428. So using the quadratic model, over 84% of the variance in total cars sold is explained by job tenure or the number of weeks they've been on the job. But what if we looked at it like this? On the left-hand side, we kind of have one linear model. And on the right-hand side, we have a different linear model. And this is the piecewise regression model. So first, let's take a look at the quadratic model output. So using the quadratic model, we can see we have an R squared of 0.8428. We saw that on the previous slide. We have an adjusted R squared 0.8218. Those are all uh, very high. A standard error of 38.74. Again, remember that is a measure of how well the data points fit around the line. Down here in the ANOVA table, we can see that we have a total sum of squares of 143216. Keep that in mind for later. We can see that we have an F statistic of 40.21, that's very high. And of course our significance level is below 0 0.001. That's several zeros and then a nine. So down below, if we look at our variables, we can see that the P values are all significant. So what about piecewise regression? Now first, you may also see piecewise regression called spline regression or segment regression. It can go by several different names. It can be used where the trend of a scatter plot seems to quickly change direction, as we saw in our scatter plot before. This location of change is called the knot or breakpoint. Again, you might see various names used for it, but we're going to call it the knot in this video. The knot can be estimated visually, like we're going to do in this video, from a sample, or it can be found iteratively to find the best fit, which means reducing the sum square due to error. So we're gonna eyeball it just using our graph, but you can run different knots and see which way the sum of squares changes and then iteratively kind of get to the lowest one, kind of like gradient descent in a way. So in practice, the location of the knot should make practical sense. So maybe it represents a specific time or an event or some other phenomena where something happens. So in this example, 
Maybe something happens at the not value. Maybe the person gets an automatic promotion and therefore they don't sell as many cars or something like that. So we will usually look to the not for some practical significance. So what about the characteristics of piecewise regression? So piecewise regression is constructed by creating a dummy variable for each side of the knot. So if you remember in the graph I had before, on the left hand side, we had a line that went from the lower left towards the knot, then it hit the knot and then changed directions and went down to the right. So what we're doing is creating a dummy variable that says, hey, this data point is on the left side of the knot and this data point is on the right side of the knot. And it looks like this. So let's start at the bottom. So X sub one is the value of the independent variable, which in this case is the number of weeks they have been on the job. So X to the K, and I'm saying X to the K, not as an exponent, but as notation. So I'm not saying X to the power of K, but X to the K. That is the value of the knot that we choose or we find iteratively. X sub K is the value of the knot dummy variable. So now let's go back up here to the middle. So we know that x sub k is the not dummy variable. So what we were saying is that the value of the not dummy variable is zero if x sub one, the value of the independent variable, in this case weeks on the job, is less than or equal to the value of the not that we choose, and we haven't chosen it yet. Or the value of the not dummy variable is one if the value of the independent variable, weeks on the job, is greater than the not value we choose. So all we're doing is coding it as a dummy variable. It's either less than or equal to the not value we choose, or the data point is greater than the not value we choose. In that case, we give it a value of one. So here's the piecewise regression equation. So we got y hat equals b sub zero, that's the intercept, plus b one x one, that's our first linear term, plus b two, and then here on the right in this different color, we sort of have the not term for the right hand side of the piecewise regression. And everything here still means the same. X sub one is the value of the independent variable. X to the K is the value of the not here on the end of the equation. And X sub K is actually the not dummy variable depending on which side of the not it falls on. So everything here we've seen, we've seen it in the previous slide. This is just the equation for the whole model. So here is our data again. Now we have to pick a not value. So remember that I'm just gonna eyeball it. We're not gonna go through and do an iterative process and find the best not value. We're just gonna sort of look at our data or sample data here and pick one. So I have chosen a not value of 350 weeks on the job. So if we look at the delineation between both sides of this line, it seems that on the left-hand side, that's sort of one linear uh, equation. And then on the right-hand side going down, that is another linear equation. So for this example, we're gonna choose a not value of 350 weeks on the job. So using our equations, this is the data we're actually gonna do a regression with. So you can see the first columns are not dummy variable. So remember, if it is less than or equal to 350 weeks on the job, that gets a value of zero. If it's greater than 350, that gets a value of one. And you can see that going down the first two columns. Now the third column, not dummy times tenure, is found out this way. So we have our not dummy times our tenure. In parentheses, we have x sub one minus x to the k times x sub k. Again, value of the independent variable minus the value of the not, which is x to the k, times the not dummy variable, which is x sub k. And again, this is just basic algebra. So for the first one, we substitute in. So the value of the independent variable for the first observation is 168 minus the value of the not, which is 350, times the value of the dummy variable, which is zero. And of course, that all multiplies out to zero because we have a zero in there. Now the second observation is different. So our value of the independent variable is 428 minus the not value of 350, and then times one, because 428 is obviously greater than 350. So when we multiply that out, we get 78. And that is how we find the value in the third column. And that will actually be the other variable in our regression analysis. So here is the piecewise model output 
using those three variables that we saw in the previous slide. So now we have an R square of 0.8933, an adjusted R square of 0.8791. Those are both higher than we had in the quadratic model. Now the standard error is 31.91. That's lower than it was in the quadratic model, which is good. Now look at the ANOVA table. The sum of squares, however, is still 143216. That's the exact same sum of squares we had in the quadratic model. And that's a fundamental idea in these types of regressions. The sum of squares is gonna be the same. It's just how you allocate it from the regression to the error. Our F statistic is 62.82, that's higher. And our significance value is 0 0.0000 and a five. Okay, so that's obviously significant. And down at the bottom, we have the coefficients for each of our variables. And we can see that the p-value for each is significant. Overall, it seems like the piecewise model was a better fit in this instance. So here is our piecewise regression equation that we looked at before. Now, all we're going to do is substitute what we got from our output into this equation. And it looks like this. So if we went back at the previous slide, we would see that our intercept was 85.91, the coefficient of B1 was 0.868, and then the coefficient for B2, which was the not dummy times the independent variable is negative 2.04. And then we substitute in 350 for the value of the not, which is X to the K. And then we're left with two things we don't know for this equation. Of course, that's X sub one, which will be the value of the independent variable that we choose. And then the value of the knot, x sub k, which will be determined by which side of the knot it's on. And this will all be clear here in a second if you're confused. But all we did was substitute in our coefficients from the piecewise regression output into the regression equation. That's all we did. So our piecewise regression equation actually has kind of two equations built in. First, there's an equation when the knot dummy variable is zero. There's a second one when the not dummy variable is one. So let's look at both. So let's take the case of zero first. So here's our regression equation we found in the previous slide. We're looking at the very last term there at the very end, x sub k. In this case, it's gonna be zero. So we can see that when that is zero, everything there on the end turns to zero. We're multiplying by zero. And therefore we are left with this equation. Y hat equals 85.91 plus 0 0.868 x sub one. So this is sort of the equation of the line on the left-hand side of our piecewise regression, everything to the left of the knot, where the dummy variable is zero. Now what about when the knot dummy variable is one? Same thing, except we're gonna substitute in one for x sub k. So we go ahead and do that, then we just do some algebra. We gotta multiply through, combine like terms, and then we end up with an equation like this negative 1.172 x sub one plus 801.31. Now this is the equation for the right-hand side of the knot. So the line to the right-hand side of the knot will have its own graph, and this is the equation that will reduce that line. So now let's go ahead and graph both of those lines. And here's what that looks like. So as we can see, on the left-hand side, we have the values that are below our not value of 350. So the blue dots there are all the observations below 350 weeks on the job, and that is modeled by that blue line that was the first linear equation we found in the previous slides. On the right-hand side, we have the orange dots with the open middle. Those are all the observations above the not value of 350, and of course, they are modeled by the orange line there on the right. So here is the equation for our first line that models everything below the not value. And here's the equation for everything above the not value. That's our linear equation there. Now, if we've done everything correctly, these two lines have to meet at our not value. And we can see that they do. So these two lines intersect at the not value of 350 weeks on the job. And if they do not, we know that something went wrong somewhere. Now, interestingly, we can also find out that the maximum point of sales, number of cars sold, seems to be 390 cars. And that is just found out by going up to the not value and then over to the left to the y-axis. And you can see that 350, 60, 70, 80, 90, that seems to be where the peak is, where the direction change happens. 
and then sales start to go downhill from there. So now let's go ahead and interpret our piecewise regression. So first we have the left side of our graph. This is when the knot is zero. So for all values below the knot value, in this case of 350 weeks on the job, the slope is positive. So that means that sales are increasing leading up to the knot value of 350 weeks. So a salesperson's car sales are expected to increase by 0.868 cars per week until 350 weeks of employment. So a salesperson is selling a car about every eight or nine days, depending on how you want to round that until 350 weeks of employment. Now we have what happens on the other side of the knot value. So in this case, this is when the knot is one. The slope is negative. So that means after that we pass the knot value and 350 weeks on the job, sales are decreasing. So a salesperson's car sales are expected to decrease by 1.172 cars per week after 350 weeks of employment. So another interesting thing here is that you can compare the slopes of each line. So with the slope of the first line is 0.868, the slope of the second line is 1.172. So it seems that car sales decrease after the knot at a much higher rate than they do increase before the knot value. It's interesting that you can compare both slopes before and after the knot. Now let's compare the quadratic model to the piecewise model. So we'll look at the following, the multiple R value, the R square value, the adjusted R square, the standard error, the MSC or the mean square error, and the F value. And here's the comparison. So for the multiple R in the quadratic, we had a 0.918 and the piecewise we had 0.945. So the piecewise was higher. R squared, the piecewise was higher. The R square adjusted, piecewise model was higher. Standard error in the piecewise model, it was lower. So we interpret that as saying that the data points fit around the piecewise model closer than they did in the quadratic model. The mean square error in the quadratic model was over 1500. In the piecewise model, the error was only a little bit over 1000. So a significant decrease in the mean square error. Again, another way of saying the model fit better. And then the F statistic, was 40.21 and of course it was 62, so much higher in the piecewise model. So what can we say? Well, the piecewise model in this case wins. It fits the model better. There is less error. The standard error is lower. The R squared values are higher, meaning more of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable. So conclusion, piecewise regression is just another tool in the analytic toolbox. It's one of those things that might have limited use, but when it can be used, it is an interesting way of looking at the data or comparing it to other models you might come up with. Its application may be limited, but it can sometimes be a great tool for specific problems, or like I said before, to compare to other models you might be developing. It's easy to interpret. It's just two linear models sort of joined together at that knot. The math involved is not that difficult. The third variable in this case you have to calculate is very easy to do. So it's actually a pretty simple way of doing regression. It's actually expandable to multiple knots. So there are ways to expand and develop piecewise models into multiple knots. So you can have a graph that has multiple linear models on it all in the same data set. But we're not going to go there for this video series. Now there is a risk of overfitting. So anytime we take a linear or even a quadratic model and then break it apart, we're sort of purposely overfitting. We're saying, okay, we're gonna develop a line on this side to fit this side of the data. And we're gonna develop a line over here on the right side to fit this side of the data. And that's almost purposely overfitting. So that break in the regression line is, I see it as just a very sharp curve, okay? It's actually a break. So there is a risk of overfitting in the piecewise model that we have to be mindful of. Okay, so that wraps up this video on a very interesting topic, one that we don't get to uh, see very often or learn about, but I think it is very good to learn uh, for other things we might learn in data science and machine learning and things like that, or statistics, of course, and that is piecewise regression. Just another tool in the toolbox for looking at our data, developing a model, and then comparing it to other models. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. 
and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.